Good day everyone, this is Engineer EMV and welcome to my channel. Before we proceed, hit the like button and subscribe for more civil engineering topics and practice problems in my channel. So welcome back guys for another session in solving problems regarding design of reinforced concrete beams under the USD method. Now we will try to solve irregular beams also under the ultimate strength design method. Here, I made a sample problem. The beam will be triangular and we need to find the moment capacity of the beam. So we will use NCP 2010 with the base of 300 millimeter. The height of the triangle is 500 millimeters. The effective depth of the triangle is 440 millimeters. The compressive strength is 28 megapascal and the yield strength of the reinforcement is 415 megapascal. Our AS is composed of four 16 millimeter diameter bars. So let us find the moment capacity of the beam. So recall in the investigation of singly reinforced beams, we first need to equate the tensile force and the compressive force in the beam and assume the value of Fs. Next, we solve for the value of A, C, Fs, the strain and the reduction factor. And lastly, we solve for the ultimate moment or the design flexural capacity of the beam. So first, of course, we will go into equate T is equal to C and assume Fs is greater than Fy. So simplifying our equation, it is equal to ASFY equal to 0.85 Fc prime area of the compression block. So we're not going to use A times B since our figure is a triangle. So we're going to use AC instead of AB. So AC is the area of the compression block. I made a figure in which the shaded region shows the area of the compression block. The A is simply the depth of the compression block and we name the value for the base of the compression block as X. So now, now we need to create an equation in which we only have a single unknown. And that should be the value of A. By performing ratio and proportion, we can write the following equation. A is to X for the compression block. Next, 500 is to 300 for the entire beam. So let us create an equation in terms of A. So X is equal to 300 over 500 multiplied by A. So by simplifying further, X is equal to 3 fifths of A. So now we won't be having difficulties in finding our unknown. So the area of the compression block is now equal to 1 half base, which is x, which is equal to 3 fifths of a, multiplied by a, the height of the compression block. Area of the compression block is 3 tenths a squared. So we are now going to input that in our working equation. So let's proceed. Substitute our values. Our AS is 4 16 millimeter diameter bars, multiplied by Fy, since we assume that Fs is greater than Fy is equal to 0.85 multiplied by Fc prime of 28 multiplied by the area of the compression block, AC, in which we have solved it with a value of 3 tenths of A squared. So let us now solve for the value of A. So we have a value of A is equal to 216.207 millimeters and that is the depth of our compression block. So next, we need to solve for the value of C, in which it can be solved by using A over beta 1. Our beta will be automatically equal to 0.85 since the compressive strength is 28 megapascal. So by dividing it by 0.85, we can get an answer of 254.361 millimeters. So third, we should not forget to check our theoretical stress in the steel. It is equal to d minus c times 600 divided by c d is equal to 440 minus c 254.361 multiplied by 600 all divided by c 254.361 the value of our stress in the steel it is equal to 437.895 and it is greater than the yield strength 415 so we have a correct assumption Next is to solve for the strain in the steel. So the formula will be dt minus c times 0.003 divided by c. Our dt will be the same as the value of d since we only have a single layer which is 440 minus c 254.361 times 0.003 divided by c. 
to 54.361. We will have a value for the strain equal to 0.00219 and that is less than 0.005 and it is also greater than the strain at FY 0.002 so it is under the transition region. So for solving the reduction factor, we can perform linear interpolation. So let's create a table, two columns. The left side is for the strain and the right side is for the reduction factor. 0.005 is it 2.90 strain at FY is 002 corresponds to 0.65 for compression control our X is our unknown and it is equivalent to a strain of 0.00219 so by linear interpolation let's write it down that is X so solving for the value of X or our reduction factor can get a value of 0.665 Seven five. So let's continue. The value of our AC is equal to 3 tenths of A squared. So by substituting the value of A in the equation, the value of our AC is equal to 14,023.64 square millimeters. And our reduction factor from the previous solution is equal to 0 0.66575. So now we can be able to solve the design flexural strength by the formula MU is equal to phi mn. So, but first, let us analyze our beam and find the moment arm that we will go into use. So, we are going to find the unknown in which it will be the moment arm in our formula. So, our compression block is in the shape of a triangle. So, its centroid is located two-thirds from the top and one-third from the bottom. So, this will be two-thirds of A. So, if that is two-thirds of A and this is the effective depth, the value of our unknown distance is equal to d minus 2 thirds of a and that is the moment arm that we are going to use. So let's write it down. mu is equal to reduction factor of 0.66575. So here I am going to use the compressive force. So 0.85 fc prime of 28 multiplied by the area of the compression block ac which is 14,023. 0.64 that is our AC multiplied by the moment arm D minus two thirds of A so D is 440 minus two thirds of A 216.207 oh so let's solve so our design flexural strength divided by 10 raised to 6 to convert it into kilonewton meter is equal to 65.741 kilonewton meter that is our answer for the moment capacity of the beam there are different types of irregular beams but don't be afraid in solving one because the principle is still the same should follow the basic steps in the investigation and analysis of rectangular beams and apply it into the rectangular beams that's all for this video i hope you've learned something and if you have questions, inquiries, and topics in mind, just comment it down below. And let's see what will be our next topic in our next videos. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more civil engineering topics and practice problems by Engineer EMV.